Welcome to A Bit of Everything! I'm Henry Higgins. I'm Josh Higgins. And today we are just back from the cinema having gone to see X-Men Dark Phoenix. And this is our spoiler free review. So first things first then, what was your overall opinion of the movie? I think it was a um, decent film. It wasn't like a terrible film but it wasn't up to the standards of the MCU films we get today. Yeah, I think the MCU is kind of spoiled as I think for how good these movies can be. Um, Especially obviously since we've had um, Homecoming, Captain Marvel, mm. um, well, Endgame, Endgame, we Endgame, of Endgame just a couple of weeks ago, about a month yeah. ago. Um, We're getting Far From Home soon. Yeah, and Far From so. Home, we're excited about that. And the thing as well, with this film, everyone involved you could kind of tell this was their last hurrah because obviously the mc is going to the mcu mm -hmm. and virtually none of the cast will be picked up because obviously they're going to be it completely with new versions of the characters and in a lot of the performances because my i i thought it was okay uh, we were talking about it before where it's watchable but it's not re-watchable yeah, like, like the flame. Well, I know it's going to be compared to the MCU, and it, it's virtually impossible at this point. But even going back to the first Iron Man, the first Iron Man is still internally rewatchable. Um, Spider Man, a lot of the Spider Man films are rewatchable. Mm -hmm. This isn't. Nothing really happens in it, apart from a few scenes. Um, the New York and the fight from the trailer on the train are really good. You you genuinely punched the air. Uh, something Storm did. Yeah. yeah. Um, I almost did the same with a scene with Nightcrawler. Uh, so there is there is positives in the movie, but if we go over the negatives first. We'll, we'll finish on a high note. Um, Jennifer Lawrence gives pretty much a pitch perfect example of someone who phones it in. Um, Sophie Turner's accent comes and goes quite a bit. Jessica Chastain, who is a really, really good actress, was, and I imagine part of it's the script and the character, but she's really bad in this film. She's really wooden. Um, nothing. Um, the aliens are from like the source material, but you would really, you would need to know that going in for it to make, for that to actually have an impact. Like, they mention who they are in the movie, but it meant nothing. Yeah. And they don't they don't really explain it all that well. No. So it's kinda of like they've read like the cliff notes of the source material and said, Oh, this is who they are, this is why they're doing it. Um, the direction, Simon Kinberg is directing it for the first time. He's been the writer of a few of the X-Men movies. Um, it's not that good. Um, a lot of the performances or, like I said, mentioned earlier, Jennifer Lawrence phoning it in. Even Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy, uh, Magneto and yeah. Xavier, they're really phoning it in in this one. Uh, although, I think you'll agree with me, Josh, that um, Nicholas Holt, who plays Beast, and Ty Sheridan, who played Cyclops, yeah. they did really well. They, they really, they were acting. Um... Most of the effects are good, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's an awesome moment as well. Again, this is going to be spoiler free, so I'm not going to explain why. But there's an awesome moment of with the X jet and where the guns are the main gun cannon on the X jet, how that works. Yeah. Was that was really, really cool. Possibly one of the coolest things in the movie, and it's right at the start, as you obviously know, the space journey uh, from the trailer is right at the start. Um, Sophie Turner's performance, accent aside, is pretty good. Um, and there is one cameo in the movie that I'm not going to spoil here. Um, didn't really mean much for yourself, because obviously it's kind of like... Um, it's for a little older fans who have been following her for a while, maybe. Um, but there's one character who gets a nice little cameo, and she is, well, kind of cut it down who could be there, maybe, isn't she? 
Um, she is visually, she is perfect. For all the characters she's playing in the brief, brief time she's on the screen, she's perfect. In the cinema, I went, oh, because I didn't expect to see her on the screen as she was. And it was really, really good. Um, so, I mean, there is positives in it. But overall, it's a sad... Considering what First Class was and how excited we were that after the last stand, they managed to reboot with the younger kids. This is the second attempt at doing the Phoenix on screen. And like the first one, it's... You've got this great story, the Phoenix Saga, the Dark Phoenix Saga, uh, written by uh, Chris Claremont. And it's perfect the entire saga from again to end is very cinematic it would transfer to the cinema ridiculously easy but in the last stand that could have been any character it didn't have to be the phoenix because there was nothing phoenixy about it and it's like yeah she's powerful but that you just put a character in there just to have the character in there and in this one it's closer to the source material but again for what the story they were doing and what they were trying to tell, it could have been any character who's just powerful. It's not the Phoenix Saga. And it's it's disappointing and it's a disappointing way for this entire series to go out. Because X-Men, well Blade kind of set the ball rolling in 98, but X-Men started the more mainstream superhero run we've got just now. X-Men 2 is great. Then Last Stand is terrible. And I've enjoyed most of the movies in these series. Uh, you have as well. You've seen the majority of them. And this was just... It's it's heartbreaking to see it go out in such a whimper. And the big hope is that when it gets rebooted for the MCU, which it will be, that one, they don't focus on Wolverine as... I know these ones didn't really focus on Wolverine, but he was in them all, pretty much. And it was almost shoehorned to get him in the movie. Whereas going forward, there's so many people they could use to be the front runner, the main character, mm -hmm. point of view character for these movies. And Marvel has done a great job with pretty much all the characters. So I have high hopes for that, but... And I've been rambling for a bit, so I'm going to let my younger compatriot say some words in a second. But for me, it's it's a poor movie. And 2 out of 5. That, that's it. It's just a 2 out of 5 movie for me. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't really have much more to say about that. Josh? Well, unlike you, you said it's not that good of a movie, I... I think I enjoyed it a bit more than you did. Mm. From your results. I enjoyed a few like stand alone scenes. Mm. Like I didn't enjoy the film as a whole because there were some bits which were either one poor acting mm. or two just poor in general. But there are good parts in the movie such as the space mission which was seen um, in the trailers. Mm -hmm. The, I think the train that scene was also in there as well. Yeah, the scene, the, tra the train scenes in the trailer. Um, just while we're talking about that, I'm sorry for jumping in. Um, like with a lot of the superhero movies that are going around at the moment, not everything in the trailer is in the movie. And some of the, th the scenes from the trailer are in the movie but don't play out as they do yeah. in the trailer. Change um, a bit. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of change around there. But the scenes you're talking about are in the trailer. Uh, so, yeah, the space mission. Well, I mean, you liked that, yeah? yeah? So what was it you liked about the space mission? What? Because I really enjoyed it as well. What, yeah. what did you like about it? The fact that... Um, not going to go into too much detail at the of moment. Of course, yeah. But they worked well as a team. Mm. Like, they really worked together. Yeah, like, they used, wasn't the, just, used all the strengths, didn't they? It wasn't just... One, you do this, you do that. It was they all did one thing. They all did, yeah. They all used their powers to combine everything yeah. as a team. 
and it was fantastic. Um, so obviously you like that scene. So effectively the bookend of the movie, the opening and the Again, it's not a spoiler to say that the train is the closing moments of the movie. You can see that from the trailer. So what was it uh, about the train sequence that made it stand out for you? Well, I think things that made it stand out was Storm did and what Nightcrawler did. And they did a similar thing to what they did at the start. They worked together. Mm. But it was, it was more... I would say it was more... Intense, yeah, because what was on the line kind see. of thing. But realistically, there were two bright sparks in a really dour time mm. of the movies. Uh, so, like, I gave it two out of five. I'm a bit older, a bit more jaded. Uh, that's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. What about you? Give uh, it a three. A three out of five. So, in the short time we've been doing the movie reviews, it's, it's the worst review movie we've done. Yeah. yeah. In a way, I am glad that it is the end of the Fox run. Uh, they, they, they really misfired the Fantastic Four. They had some hits with the X-Men series, but misfires happened as well. I mean, I enjoyed Origins, X-Men or Wolverine, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I enjoyed that movie. And to this day, I stand by that if the end villain wasn't called, well, he wasn't actually called Deadpool, but we just knew that's who he was. If the end villain had not been Deadpool and had been someone who had taken all the powers like he did and wasn't in Wade's body and was just Weapon 11, that film would not have got half the crap it got. There's some good performances in it, there's some good action in it. Leif Schreiber dominates that movie, everything is on the screen, uh, Sabretooth. It has the best opening credits of any of the X-Men films, if arguably of any superhero film. And this is going out with a whimper, like I said earlier. See it for completionist's sake. Um, but see it like we did at the cheaper local cinema and going to a big multiplex. It's it's sad. And see a good franchise go like this. It is a sad to see a good franchise go like this, and it's sad to see that the cartoon from the nineties, which is fantastic by the way, the X Men cartoon from the nineties is amazing. The cartoon from the nineties managed to get the Dark Phoenix saga done right over a couple of episodes of that cartoon, over a few episodes of that cartoon. And they got it right. And obviously, yeah, in animation, you can do a lot more because there's no real budget for the special effects, what you want to do. But if a cartoon from 25 years ago, 26 years ago can get it right, why can't Hollywood? They've had two stabs at it now. And I genuinely hope that the MCU does try and do a Dark Phoenix saga because they've got the cosmic side of the MCU down with obviously the Guardians of the Galaxy, Thanos and everything they've done there. They've got that cosmic side there. They could easily integrate all of that in without any problems. So, but I hope to stay away from it for a good while, get some goodwill behind the characters again, introduce the Fantastic Four first because they've been gone a lot, they've been gone for a while, and that's really it. it it's disheartening, and I can't recommend this movie, and it pains me to say so. Um, I genuinely can try and find the good, and even the worst film. And a lot of times in the worst films, and again, you'll get this when you're a bit older when you can watch the really cheap, terrible horrors and such like. The, there's an enjoyment in watching a film that's so bad that it's laughably bad and you can enjoy it. On a level it wasn't designed to be enjoyed, but you can enjoy it. Mm. Whereas with this, it's just not a good film. And James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender deserve much more. Um, Charles Xavier and Eric Lancher deserve much more. 
Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen's versions deserved more because these are this is set in 92 so going by the jumps the the previous ones had was 60s 70s 80s and 90s the next one there they would have become the ian mccallan and um, patrick stewart versions of the characters that's what they would have became and it it's just bad and i'm struggling i'm trying to end this on a high note and I can't, I can't end this on a high note, except to say it's under two hours. That's pretty much it. That's, that, apart from the sequences we mentioned earlier, which are the few bright spots, that's the best thing going for it, is it's under two hours. So, we're going to wrap this up. Two out of five, three out of five. Take, don't just take our word for it, read the round, listen to some other reviews and that, make up your own mind. If you want to go and see it, go and see it. I'm not recommending you do, but I'm not recommending you don't. You may find some enjoyment in it that we didn't. And more power to you for that. Please like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell to turn on notifications, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.